Okay, next is desirable difficulties. Desirable difficulties is a term coined in 1994 by UCLA psychologist Robert Bjork that essentially refers to the idea that we want to add difficulty to a task in such a way that it improves learning rather than hindering it. Um, challenge is good, of course, but there's a point at which things can become uh, too challenging, too much unknown, too much chaos. You know, think back to that comfort zone chart. Um, too much difficulty or challenge or unknown can lead into that chaos zone. And we know that we aren't learning as much once we've crossed over that threshold. So we want our athletes to effectively learn. We have to limit the difficulties. And we want those difficulties to be the ones that are desirable. So more challenge isn't always better. Let's start with an example here um, that maybe isn't desirable and, and then we can tear it apart a little bit. So let's say you're working with a climber whose limit is around V5 and they almost always choose to remain square when a drop knee would be the better solution. And you can see that there are these available drop knees that this climber is missing. And it, you believe it would be more effective, more efficient, if they learned how to use drop knees and could employ them when they made more sense. So let's say this climber uh, avoids crimps. They prefer to climb open-handed or on slopers. Um, they also avoid really steep terrain. They, they really like to be on lightly overhanging uh, walls. That's where they feel most comfortable. So you as the coach are going to get really granular with, with all the difficulties of this drill. You want to help them in all of their weaknesses. So what you do is you choose a V5 on a really steep wall in the gym with some in cut cramps and you're like, okay, um, let's use the feet that are the furthest away that you can and drop knee your way up this wall. Sure, you've added a lot of difficulty, you know, but now what you're doing is creating chaos for this climber. They're on an angle that's tough for them. They're grabbing holds that they don't feel super comfortable on. You're challenging their mobility by saying, use these feet that are really far away and they're at a grade that is difficult for them to begin with. So there's all these difficulties, some which aren't very desirable. Instead, you know, we want to limit the difficulties while amplifying the desirable ones. So what I would do in this situation is let's, let's make the terrain a little easier. Let's say V3 for this climber, maybe, maybe even V2. Let's stay on a wall that is an angle they really enjoy. So lightly overhanging. You can grab these holds however you want to. I'm going to choose problems that don't have a bunch of obvious in cut crimps. You can climb slopers, you can climb whatever you want. And I'm going to say, um, you have to have both feet on the wall for every move and you have to try to keep your arms as straight as possible. This is going to take out of play a lot of that step up to a high foot, rock over on it, stay square to the wall, lock off and reach. So they're going to have to explore this solution space while not being in chaos due to the, the grade of the climb, due to the hold type, due to the angle. They're going to be able to get in positions that are relatively comfort for them mobility wise. And they're going to have to figure out, okay, if I put both feet on here and I want to keep my arms straight, then what I need to do is turn my hip and suddenly they're in a drop knee. That's going to be way more valuable than putting them in this situation where frankly, maybe they do find a solution through it. It's unlikely to be the one that you hope they find. And it's unlikely to be something that is long-term valuable for them because you've just put them in such a, a prescriptive, unique situation that they may never have to do that.